In this video, we're gonna talk about 11 proven ways to fix your back. Stay tuned because number 11 is a good one. But before that, let's talk about the three factors that might increase your risk of getting back pain. So 85% of people will get back pain sometime in their life. There are some factors that increase your risk of getting lower back pain. So the first risk factor would be in a prolonged posture for a long period of time. So this is prolonged sitting or prolonged standing. Studies show that if you are in one position for a long period of time, it does increase the risk of getting back pain. So if your job involves a lot of sitting for a long period of time, like office work, or if it requires a lot of standing and walking for a long period of time, like nursing, you're at a higher risk of getting low back pain. The second risk factor is increased physical labor. So with laborers, concreters, tradies, a lot of lifting, a lot of shifting, this can increase the risk of you getting back pain due to all the load and overuse on your body. There is especially an increased risk factor if there's a lot of vibration required in your work as jackhammering or heavy machinery or driving, which involves a lot of vibration. Again, studies show increased chance of lower back pain. And the last risk factor that we can note is smoking. So smoking can increase your risk of feeling back pain. The reason for that is when you inhale your smoke or your vape, what happens is your lungs are filled with smoke and all these other chemicals. So your body is actively fighting those chemicals. And what happens is because your body is focusing on breaking down the chemicals that are in your lung, it doesn't focus on refreshing and renewing and recovering in other aspects of your body, which leads to the increase of lower back pain, as well as all these other issues you get associated with smoking. So these are the five causes of lower back pain. The first cause of lower back pain is weak muscles. So if you have weak muscles through the core, which is all the muscles around your stomach and your back, including the quadratus lumborum, as well as the hip muscles, so the bum muscles and all the hip flexors here, weak muscles are shown to cause and result in lower back pain. The second thing is tight muscles. So if the muscles around the core, the back and the glutes are tight, what can happen is it can hold onto your body and hold onto the joints, which means that it won't, it'll be harder for you to get into certain positions. And often this can lead to back pain. The third risk factor is irritation through the structures of your spine. So we do have a spine right here. You have your discs, you have the joint spaces here. As I mentioned before, with tight muscles, what happens is it holds onto these joints right here. So as you go to move, if there is some sort of existing irritation through the joint line or through the disc, through the annular propulsus, anything like that, it can result in exacerbated lower back pain and that can lead to other symptoms as well which leads us to the fourth thing. So if you do have irritation through the joint spaces here, you may have irritation or increased inflammation through the nerves, and that again can lead to lower back pain. Usually people can get sciatic-like symptoms, which is neurosensitivity or nerve pain. You can experience anything like pins and needles, numbness, burning, electricity, weakness in the legs, or loss of muscle function. And it, this can be experienced anywhere in the back or even shooting down into the legs and into the bum area as well. And the last cause of lower back pain is a serious pathology that is not within a musculoskeletal setting. So this can include something like a fracture, cancer, some sort of autoimmune disease, some sort of visceral organ disease. So if it's something like that, we'd usually refer you off to a doctor or a specialist to get blood tests, get other scans, and to do some sort of intervention to help with that. Since we've gone through all of that, we're gonna go through 11 different types of ways that you can help to reduce back pain and actually get you back into function, feeling less pain and feeling great. So the first one is a bit controversial. It is bed rest, okay? There are studies that show that adequate bed rest for the first 48 hours after an injury can actually help to facilitate recovery. Anything longer than 48 hours will actually lead to deterioration, weaker muscles, tighter muscles, and the pain can actually get a lot worse. So bed rest within reason, 48 hours, two days is pretty good. Anything longer is not recommended. The second way we can help is with taping. So we have specific taping techniques we can use to offload your back and your hips to take pressure off while you're in pain. So you can click on this video here and this will show you a way to tape your back if you are getting back pain. The third thing would be analgesia. So this is pain medication. Usually you should go to your doctor or your pharmacy and they can discuss different pain options with you. As physios, we can recommend non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication. I'm not gonna name them here, but 
these medications can be shown to calm down acute inflammation and it can help to decrease symptoms you might be getting. The fourth treatment we can do is electrical therapy. So in the clinic here, we use electrical stimulation. And what this does is it helps to downregulate the pain signals you, may, you might be having. So we, what the machine does, it puts electricity into your body and that kind of tells the nerve endings and all the structures there to kind of switch off the pain signal. And this can lead to decreases in pain. So you can watch this video here. This will show you how to use tens at home the fifth thing you can do is early loading of that area so if you are getting back pain the sooner you get moving the better you're gonna feel so this includes very gentle back exercises hip stretches a very gentle activation of the core so again video here this will show you a, a very easy exercise program to get started with lifting the sooner you start moving, the sooner your body starts to, to decrease the pain signal or desensitize. At the same time, you start to recruit more muscles and this will help to support your back so you feel less pain. The last few treatment options can be prescribed or done by a physiotherapist. So the sixth option that is shown to help decrease pain would be some sort of joint mobilization. So as physios, we're trained to do specific techniques that help to stretch the joint line and to offload that joint space. Uh, chiropractors use what we call a manipulation, which is an extreme joint uh, mobilization. It's not very recommended for a very fresh back pain. You're better off using a physio with joint mobilization, which is a very steady and easy way to stretch the joint to help to decrease pain signals. The seventh way to feel better with back pain would be some sort of massage or compassionate touch. So the way this works is when we do massage, it turns down the sympathetic nervous system, which is your flight or fight system, and it turns up the parasympathetic nervous system, which is your rest, digest, and recover system. So any kind of massage, very gentle, it shouldn't be painful at all, you shouldn't feel stressed, it should be very relaxing, and it should help to soften everything. This is shown to help to decrease pain if you are getting an acute bout. The eighth treatment option would be some sort of needling or acupuncture. So there are some muscles that are very deep down, especially in the, in the hip area. No matter what type of massage or trigger point therapy we do, we won't be able to reach it. So needling would be a good option for that. Again, this is triggering the parasympathetic nervous system. So this helps for you to recover and relax a little bit. And this is shown to decrease the pain signal. The ninth treatment option available would be some sort of neural mobilization, which is a nice way of saying a nerve glide or a nerve stretch. So over time, as we mentioned with the spine, if you're getting irritation through the joint space, you can get irritation through the nerve root. When that happens, it can lead to nerve symptoms or neurosensitivity. So a good way to get rid of that is to do some sort of nerve mobilization. We have a video here. This is a good one to do if you are getting sciatic-like symptoms, which is nerve-based pain from your back shooting down into the legs. Keep in mind with these exercises, they can be very uncomfortable. If they start to flare up the symptoms significantly, it might be something a bit more serious. So just discontinue and get it checked out. But early mobilization of the nerves would help to decrease your symptoms. The 10th option would be to do some some sort of decompression or what we call traction. So traction means decompression. So we have a traction unit just there. You can also do manual decompression or traction of your back. So there's an, another video here. This is the different ways to decompress your back, taking pressure off the disc, the nerve, the joints, and making you feel a lot better. And the 11th and most important therapy that will help to decrease your back pain would be some sort of exercise. So there are billions of exercises you can do. You need to find the ones that get you moving, but don't irritate the symptoms, okay? So very onset, you want to be doing very um, gentle movements in an active range of motion that you can handle as long as the pain isn't too much. So we usually say anything about a four out of 10 pain that is too much pain, you wanna go anything below that. So that can involve some sort of stretching, early muscle activation, again, nerve glides, movements. Your, your physio, when they do a diagnosis with you, they will prescribe specific exercises to your case. So please see a physio and they can give you an exercise program that works best for you.
Hey, you guys have made it to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something about treating lower back pain and how to decrease the risk of getting lower back pain. If you liked what you saw here, please consider leaving a like. Otherwise, please share it to someone who has back pain so they don't feel it. Back pain is very debilitating. It can ruin your whole day, week or month, even your life. Avoiding getting an issue is a lot better than trying to treat the issue later on. So the more people know this information, the better you're gonna be. Otherwise, Click here if you want to see the last video we posted. It's good stuff. All right, we'll see you guys next time.